one of the mysteries that seems to have persisted for quite some time is that of spontaneous human combustion. However, is this combustion really that spontaneous? Are there some logical explanations as to what's actually been going on? Well, the general pattern is that someone or the body of someone somehow ignites, is almost completely incinerated, and yet leaves the rest of the room virtually undamaged. There are several elements to cover here. First, the most obvious one, is how is the burning of a human body possible? Well, whilst you might think the human body has a fairly high water content, would be difficult to burn. Also, wood also contains a fairly high water content, yet it can burn quite readily. The key factor here is that the human body can store quite a lot of energy for later use. That energy store can, under certain conditions, burn fairly readily. Both the fat and the protein in the human body will burn. The fat will generally release more energy and more the protein. So fat will burn hotter than protein. And most of the victims of human combustion are generally in fairly poor health. They might be alcoholics or overweight, or even a combination of these factors. Meaning they had a fairly high proportion of fat to the amount of protein in their bodies. And once the outer clothing of a person has been lit, the fat from underneath the skin then soak into the clothing and enable the fire to burn hotter and spread until virtually the entire body would be alight. The fire would be able to spread upwards, burning quite fiercely so it was where there was the most fat. So it could mean that the extremities such as the wrists, hands, ankles and feet, their low fat composition and also their location and out of the direct path of the fire could result in these parts of the body barely being touched by the flames. This leaves us then with the question, how did the clothing catch fire? Now, rather it being some form of spontaneous combustion, there's normally some easy form of combustion nearby, the most common being fireplace, candles or cigarettes, all of which can easily ignite clothing in contact with the clothing for enough time. This ignition could even be assisted by the presence of alcohol, as many of the victims were actually alcoholics as well. Of course, most people have their clothing catch fire won't burn to a crisp. However, these people were generally poor health, so they might have actually had a heart attack before the fire started. Alternatively, they may have fainted or had some other condition that rendered them unconscious. Then they could have been overcome by the fumes from the fire. These fumes could have been carbon monoxide or some other toxic gas released when the clothing burned. It's meaning that the person burning wouldn't move or try to get help whilst being burned. So the final question is, why don't the surrounding objects burn? Those objects close to the body only generally show relatively minor scorching. What's left behind is a foul smell, an oily residue, and extremities of the bodies like the hands and feet. Well, the foul smell is a combination of the body and hair and the clothing burning. The oily residue is the unburnt fat from the body, and the extremities, as I say, are unlikely to burn. When the body is burning, it's doing so at a relatively low temperature compared to most normal house fires. Most of the heat has been carried upwards. The human body acts rather like a very large candle. This results in a large soot deposit on the ceiling just above the body. Not enough heat being generated to actually ignite the ceiling, especially if that ceiling is actually quite high. Also, at the same time, the heat isn't high enough to actually ignite any objects on the floor. Again, they just show signs of scorching. That may seem that there have to be quite a few special factors in play what appear to be spontaneous human combustion to actually take place. And all those factors are unlikely to take place together. Something other than the mundane must be taking place. However, it is a mistake to view these cases in isolation. If you look at a wider group of people who died in house fires and other similar incidents, then spontaneous human combustion doesn't seem quite so extraordinary. There are a large number of people who die in house fires each year. Many of these will resemble the basic profile of spontaneous human combustion. So for instance, they might have a heart attack or sitting in an armchair smoking a cigarette. The cigarette then ignites them. However, if in the case the armchair also burns and then sets the rest of the house on fire, the cause of death isn't regarded as anything weird or unusual. It could result as a failed example of spontaneous human combustion. And the few examples Spontaneous human combustion, now part of a much larger group of fire deaths. It's only when the circumstances are just right 
but it looks like a spontaneous event. Hence why the number of deaths associated with spontaneous human combustion is so small compared to the number of fire deaths in general. So rather than spontaneous human combustion being a mystery, it's a fairly explainable, if somewhat unusual, event.